Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Stories from the Field, Transcribing the John Tabori Papers at the New York Botanical Garden. Uh, before we jump into things, I have a few just quick housekeeping notes and community guidelines to mention. Um, if you have any sound or technical issues today, please let me know in the chat box with a direct message. Um, this webinar is being recorded and the recording as well as a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation is going to be sent out to all registrants within the next week or so. Um, we will be doing a brief Q&A at the end of the presentation, uh, but feel free to send any of your questions through the chat box at any time. Just know that we might not get to them until the end. Um, and we just ask that you hold each other with mutual respect and come to the space teachable um, and try to stay engaged with our presenter throughout this program. Uh, and now I just wanted to share a little bit about the Documentary Heritage Preservation Services for New York program, DIPSNY, as we like to call it, is a collaboration between the New York State Archives and the New York State Library with services provided by the Conservation Center for Art and Historic Artifacts. DIPSNY is the statewide program that provides free planning and education services to support the vast network of collecting institutions, <clears throat> such as archives, libraries, historical societies, museums, and other organizations that safeguard and ensure access to New York's historical records and library research materials. DIPSNY services include archival needs assessments, preservation and condition surveys, strategic planning assistance, and access to a variety of educational programs, such as this webinar. So to learn more about our services, you can visit us at dhpsny.org. And with that, I'm going to pass things over to Stephen to get us started for the day. Hello there. Thank you. With funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities and the Carnegie Corporation of New York, the archives of the New York Botanical Garden were able to scan the garden's holdings of the correspondence of the renowned 19th century botanist John Torrey, and to make these letters available for crowdsourced transcription. Slide, please. Thank you. John Torrey is considered one of the most important botanists of the early development of scientific botany, horticulture, and agriculture in 19th century America. He corresponded with botanists and natural historians throughout America and Europe. This network enabled him to collect, describe, and classify plant specimens from around the world. While the correspondence contains important information on Torrey's botanical work, these documents are also a valuable resource to scholars, students, and members of the public studying American history, including North American expeditions, westward expansion, and the evolution of American science in the 19th century. Next slide. John Torrey was a faculty member at West Point Military Academy, Columbia College, Princeton University, and New York University. And as his reputation grew, renowned botanists entrusted specimens to him for identification. His Flora of New York State, published in 1843, was the largest flora of its kind and served as a model for many other state floras. Next slide, please. Torrey identified and prepared descriptions for all of the plants collected during the surveys of the Pacific Railroad routes and the Mexican Boundary Survey. He was a founding member of the National Academy of Sciences and presided over the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and he was twice elected president of the New York Academy of Sciences. His lectures were the genesis of the Torrey Botanical Society, which is still the oldest botanical society in the Americas today. For many scholars and the public at large, the John Torrey papers were unknown and underutilized. Transcribing these historical documents and making them keyword searchable has made them available to a much broader audience. This project enabled the conservation, digitization, and transcription of three and a half linear feet of correspondence, which was received by John Torrey and comprised some 10,000 sheets in four languages. Next slide, please. Using the transcription platform called From the Page, the John Torrey papers were then made available online through the Biodiversity Heritage Library and its mirrors, the Digital Public Library of America and the Internet Archive. The Mertz Library is a founding member of the Biodiversity Heritage Library, which is a consortium of the world's major natural history libraries digitizing their collections. Upon receipt of the three-year $260,000 award from the NEH, a tabletop scribe scanner was purchased from Internet Archive for use on this project. Significant assembly and calibration was required prior to using the equipment. The NYBG systems librarian and digital imaging technician hired for this project both undertook the work. 
Significant planning for the digitization component of the project was done before the actual digitization began. This included discussing file naming conventions for the page images in TIFF format and the required page level metadata. Another topic for discussion was the proper mapping to the Biodiversity Heritage Library's architecture. Next slide, please. A new MARC record for each correspondent represented in the collection. Well, we have to go to the next. I think that, yeah, there we go. Thanks. Project staff agreed that the benefits of having one MARC record for each correspondent, approximately 350, and the rich contextual information that could be included in these records warranted the significant amount of work that it would require. In the first year of the grant, 1,022 letters consisting of 3,624 pages were digitized. Of that total, 2,300 pages were made available in Biodiversity Heritage Library for researchers. Next slide, please. Prior to digitization, the Merch Library's conservation team reviewed all correspondence to evaluate any condition issues and determine the best approach for imaging. The majority of the letters presented folds, surface distortion, minor tears, and some losses, stains, and dirt. The conservation staff decided to stabilize the entire collection before imaging. Next slide, please. A transcription tool called From the Page, developed by Brumfield Labs, was identified by our systems librarian as a good fit for this project. To enable the transcription tool installation, an account with Linode, a web hosting company, was needed. The Brumfields then hired tra had, uh, training sessions with key project staff. This platform was also used by our colleagues at Harvard Botany Libraries, Missouri Botanical Garden, Fordham University, and the Smithsonian. As the transcription tool was used, the project team identified several areas where the software failed to meet the needs of the project. One problem identified was the identification of individual page images on the user interface with a simple numeral rather than the rich page level metadata defined and implemented for the project. For example, the first page of a letter from Alphonse de Condole to John Torrey was initially identified as number one on from the page, but identified by our team as 6th of August, 1863, number one, in the page level metadata standards that were developed. A transcription coordinator was hired to oversee the efforts of the volunteer pool during the transcription. From beginning to end, we would have three coordinators hired to oversee the project. Next slide, please. In one year, the coordinator organized a training session in, in year one, uh, where nine New York Botanical Garden volunteers were trained to use from the page and to transcribe letters. The volunteers provided valuable feedback on the process and the resources and documentation that had been developed. The page notes component in from the page allowed transcribers to post comments, questions, and suggestions regarding the transcription process which could be viewed and responded to by the transcription coordinator and other volunteers. I think the slide is out of order here. Could we go to the next one? Yeah. Resources to inform the public about John Tory and the project uh, included, the next slide, please. Hmm. We're missing something. <laughs> we'll hold off there. Uh, the resources that were developed created include transcribing the John Tory papers, a lib guide, the resource provided information on the papers, a biography of Tory, information about his key publications and guides to help people start transcribing the papers, a landing page for the Biodiversity Heritage Library about the John Tory papers, contain information about the collection, a biography of him, and links to his publications already scanned in the Biodiversity Heritage Library, as well as access to resources for transcribing the papers themselves. And then in the Digital Public Library of America, uh, harvest of content from BHL occurs on a bi-monthly interval. This is significant because the Digital Public Library of America may be preferred, preferred by scholars over the Biodiversity Heritage Library platform, especially scholars in the humanities community. We also created a distinct collection for this project in the Internet Archive. Next slide, please. Oh, no, we're actually, we're actually there. We're all there. 
Prior to beginning work on the project, the tabletop scribe was identified as a preferred scanner for content to be ingested into BHL. On the strength of the enthusiastic reviews received from several institutions, a decision was made to purchase this from the Internet Archive for use in this project. After digitization began uh, with the scanner, image quality problems were identified. When a scribe scanner is used, all post-processing of images is done by Internet Archive staff rather than by the digitization staff at the home institution. The Internet Archive affixes a fixed set of corrections to all images received from the scribe machines, and this made it difficult to achieve the high-quality images needed for the project. Project staff concluded that imaging archival correspondence on the scanner of the scribe scanner was inadvisable, and all digitization of correspondence was then shifted to an existing overhead camera stand. All image correction and post-processing was then done right at NYBJ. As an extension of the project, the team did decide to identify a number of books from John Torrey's own library held in the Mertz Library. These titles were then uh, they were annotated and inscribed to Torrey, and they were digitized using the scribe scanner. So we did get to use it after all with a scanning technician. The next slide, please. Oh, uh, we jumped ahead. <laughs> I think we need to go back to. No, go back, back, one more, thank you. While working on this project, the team discovered several deficiencies in the way BHL ingests metadata for archival materials and with the way that BHL metadata is mapped to the Digital Public Library of America metadata. For example, dates from the subfield of Mark 245 fields are not captured in BHL titles and the genre correspondence cannot be set automatically when Mark records are ingested. The Tory Project team at NYBG brought these problems to the attention of other BHL member libraries. Meetings to reach consensus about the best solutions to these problems extended well beyond the boundaries of this project. When individual letters are defined as BHL segments, static URLs are assigned. Oh, I think we need to go up to another. Yeah, OK. Static U, no, no. <laughs> One up. Thank you. Skip that. Um, uh, where did uh, I lost my place? So um, when individual letters are defined as BHL segments, static URLs are assigned. Our systems librarian worked with the digital public projects librarian at the Harvard Botany Libraries on a method of making individual letters within digitized correspondence more discoverable by defining BHL segments. The static URLs assigned to BHL segments can be used to link letters between two people. In addition, the method developed and documented supports the download of metadata for individual letters from BHL and its import into reference management software, such as Mendeley and Zotero. This feature makes it much easier for scholars to cite letters in their work. The next slide, please. And okay, we'll just hold here. Our digiting uh, imaging technician completed scanning in year two of all 9,967 pages within the correspondence. The project cataloger spent a substantial portion of her time creating original bib records and accompanying authority records for the John Tory papers and began cataloging the records of each correspondent. Conservation treatment was completed early on during the second year of the project. A conservator, three volunteers, and a summer intern reviewed each letter and performed the necessary treatment to make them safe to handle and allow for more efficient workflow. Our first transcription coordinator resigned to take another job out of state. And after four months, we hired a replacement. They created a detailed set of guidelines for transcribing the letters for all volunteers. A weekly project update was sent out to volunteers every Monday morning, highlighting the progress made on transcriptions, providing new old words of the week, Tory related miscellanea and interesting quotes from letters. Volunteer transcribers communicate with the transcription coordinator via email and in the page notes feature found in from the page software. Next slide, please. 
As part of the grant, we began a collaboration with the Cooperstown Graduate Program in Museum Studies. Mertz Library Director and the Dean of the Museum Studies Program devised a project for a small team of second year students to create a digital exhibit themed on John Tory. Three graduate students visited the garden to meet with the project team here to talk about the content of the archives and what would make for an interesting exhibit. Several hours were spent discussing some of the highlights of the letters and interesting correspondence and viewing many of the actual artifacts, uh, uh, documents and, and some artifacts as well. The team then returned to Oneonta to prepare their proposal. The Cooperstown students, along with their advisor, decided to focus their research on Tory's relationship with Charles Fremont and his role in the expeditions to the American West. Using WordPress, the Cooperstown team was given access to the staging area where they built the exhibit. Next slide, please. Outreach during the second year of the grant consisted of a presentation on the project given to 150 members of the Tory Botanical Society's annual meeting at the New York Botanical Garden, a presentation given to students at the Queens College Library School, registration of the project with sciencestarter.com, which resulted in over 650 page viewings and 14 new volunteer transcribers. An email blast was sent to all garden members, resulting in a spike in viewing of the Lib Guide, and several new volunteers are there. National Citizen Science Day was celebrated at New York Botanical Garden, at which we tabled the project, gathering visitor emails of potential volunteers. I presented on the project to colleagues at the annual meeting of the Council of Botanical and Horticultural Libraries and the European Botanical and Horticultural Libraries Group which together had their annual meeting consisting of 100 people. What were the challenges faced in year two? Statistics. It would have been helpful for from the page administrators to have created a customizable statistics dashboard, including detailed stats for the total number of pages transcribed in each collection, the number of pages transcribed in a given week, the number of pages transcribed by each volunteer, et cetera. This was discussed, but no solution was found. And in the meantime, these statistics were being kept manually as best they could be derived. Next slide, please. The students from the Cooperstown uh, program suggested the use of XX as the platform to build the digital exhibit. This was the software used to host the Cooperstown Museum Studies website and one in which they were very familiar. The New York Botanical Garden team had to consider how to sustain the site after the project ended. And since WordPress is used as the platform to host digital content at the New York Botanical Garden, the students were given access to a staging area for WordPress. Because they were unfamiliar with it, the learning curve was steep, resulting in some delay in getting the content developed. What ended up happening in the end is the students graduated from their program, and we had to work with our exhibitions team here at the New York Botanical Garden to finish the content and create a website that could be hosted at New York Botanical Garden. This is found on the Mertz Library homepage. The completed website focuses on Tory's impact during his day and his contribution to identifying the plants of New York City, as well as the garden's important role in the conservation of the city's flora. Staffing. Also at the end of year two, both the digital imaging technician and the volunteer transcription coordinator left the project for other jobs. We were not able to locate a replacement for the coordinator for another six months. At the beginning of year three, the key objective we set was to increase the number of letters transcribed and ingest them into the Biodiversity Heritage Library to make them more widely available to the research public. In order to track the number of transcriptions needing quality control and approval before being uploaded, the newly hired transcription coordinator created a detailed Excel spreadsheet to track transcription progress. Information captured in the spreadsheet included the number of correspondence, the number of pages per correspondent, the percent of transcription text uploaded to BHL, and the remaining work to be done. Next slide, please. Using various outreach methods, such as distributing a project announcement to colleges and universities, and through public history and archival social media channels, the volunteer pool increased significantly from 92 to 172 volunteers during year three, which began in June 2019. 
To keep volunteers interested, motivated, and engaged, the transcription coordinator continued to send weekly project updates that provided a transcription completion status and highlighted new old words of the week, Tory-related miscellanea, and interesting quotes from transcribed letters. Next slide, please. The project team worked with the technical team in BHL in collaboration with programmers from the transcription tool from the page to successfully incorporate new functionality into BHL, allowing the upload of transcriptions in place of the previous automatically generated OCR, optical character recognition. Handwritten archival materials are notoriously problematic for OCR software. The project team was able to generate machine readable text that enables searching and discoverability. And with this new functionality, these transcriptions can now be uploaded in place of the automatically generated OCR, allowing them to be full text searchable and enabling the taxonomic names to be recognized by software. Since this transcribed text can be viewed alongside the digitized page image, users can more easily read materials with difficult to decipher handwriting. Next slide, please. The Mertz Library also hosted a small public display of original archival material from the Tory collection, allowing our volunteers to interact with the primary source material, encouraging a direct connection between original and digital content. In a successful effort to target and attract new volunteers who possess skill sets that would allow them to become significant contributors to the project. The project was also prominently featured as part of our open house events here in the Mertz Library, and several Tory transcription workshop events were held to increase production and communication between volunteers. At these events, members of the New York Botanical Garden staff and the general public were able to interact on site with the transcription coordinator while creating a sense of community among the volunteers. Next slide, please. Transcription coordinator attended National Council on Public History's annual conference where he engaged in discussions on the significance of crowdsourced transcription projects and potential methods of promotion, as well as the management of digital volunteers. He promoted the project through word of mouth and handing out a printed flyer about the project and discussion of the project at various conference workshops. Outreach and exposure of the digitization of digitizing and transcribing the John Tory papers was also increased through tabling at local events at New York Botanical Garden, such as the Farmer's Market, where we had a word search game and the annual citizen science celebration. Throughout year three, the transcription platform from the page experienced several instances of technical difficulty, which interrupt workflow. Technical issues included, but were not limited to connectivity issues with the internet archive, internal coding errors, site crashes leading to loss of content, difficulty acquiring accurate statistics, and issues in exporting content in its proper format. On each occasion, the transcription coordinator and systems librarian worked closely with Brumfeld Labs, the creators and proprietors of From Page software, to find appropriate solutions. As of December 2019, 9,213 pages were marked as being transcribed, 87%, or 8,261 pages, had actually been reviewed and uploaded to the Biodiversity Heritage Library and made available for full text searching. As of December 2019, weekly project emails continued to go out to the 222 registered volunteers, roughly 20% of whom were active on a weekly or monthly basis. A smaller subset of about 15 transcribed on a near daily basis and represented the most significant contributions to the project. Special mention should be made of outreach to high school students. It was discovered that the New York State school system had not required teaching of cursive writing as a core skill since 2011. However, it was still being taught during that time in private schools and a small group of Bronx Catholic high schoolers that we did an outreach presentation to did not have any problems in reading the cursive letters. In June, 2018, both the volunteer transcription coordinator and the digiting, uh, digital imaging technician resigned their positions for full-time employment elsewhere. With permission from the National Endowment, the two positions were consolidated to create one new position known as the Transcription Coordinator 
for the remainder of the project. Many letters transcribed through the project continued uh, to several scholar were contributed to several scholarly articles surrounding John Tory and his work, which were published in 2021 as part of the 150th anniversary celebration of the Tory Botanical Society. Next slide, please. Hillary Callahan, professor of environmental biology at Barnard College, bought a class of 20 students to a special presentation on the Tory transcription project. Members of the class worked on transcriptions for several weeks in coordination with a larger project on biodiversity. The professor was specifically interested in the intersection of humanities and the natural sciences and chose participation in the Tory project because she believed it was an impactful and practical way of highlighting the connection between the two disciplines. Paula Lazarus is an associate professor in anthropology at St. John's University. She taught a class in the history of biodiversity and ecology and incorporated the transcription project into her curriculum. Each student identified one correspondent, wrote a biography about their specific scientific exploits, and they also transcribed at least one letter in the collection, the Tory collection. A minimum of 13,000 views in the internet archive were recorded during the project uh, of, uh, I should say, 13,000 views of the John Tory letters in the Internet Archive and BHL were recorded during the project with 2,438 views to the LibGuide we had created. Challenges faced in year theory include a government shutdown. The team was faced with the difficulties of the shutdown, which prevented access to several accounts and websites, specifically those dealing with the Smithsonian Institute, which is the home of the Biodiversity Heritage Library Administration. These difficulties created holes in the workflow as their software known as Macaw was instrumental in the movement of content into the internet archive and successfully from the page and BHL. When the government shutdown ended after one month though, the transcription coordinator position was funded with benefits for one year and ended in February, 2020. Next slide, please. COVID closure in March of 2020 left the New York Botanical Garden archivist and project team leader, myself, to continue contact with remaining volunteers and review nearly 1,000 pages of transcription, which needed editing and verification before being passed to the systems librarian for upload to biodiversity, the Biodiversity Heritage Library. A number of transcriptions marked as completed were found to have been incomplete or fraught with errors. Volunteers skipped over lengthy Latin descriptions and long lists of plant names, such as what you see here on the screen. Final report submission was extended to September 2020. Thank you. Leah? I think we have one more slide. There we go. An example of one of the worst <laughs> handwriting uh, elements found in the collection but one that was actually quite necessary when you think about it. If you're out there with limited paper out on an expedition somewhere, you write your letter, and when you run out of space, you just turn it on its side and continue writing that way. It wasn't uncommon at the time. Leah, we're all set. Okay, so now we're going to open up um, for our Q&A session. And so folks, if you just want to pop any questions you might have into the chat box, uh, we'll give you all a minute or so to start typing. So you have a, a, both a comment and a question from Rhonda. Uh, said, very informative presentation. And what did you find to be the greatest challenge for this project? Well, there were two, actually. 
And the first one was the software. The software that we had chosen from the page uh, was still a relatively new and, and going through a shakedown period. And there were a lot of elements that we found were lacking that we would like to have. Although since that time, the developers, uh, the founders, the Brumfelds have worked on improving and adding new uh, elements uh, to the software. So I suppose if we used it today or reviewed it today, we would found that many, find that many of the things that we had wanted had, had been addressed. And the other element is really the staffing uh, with the uh, transcription coordinator position. The mistake we made in the beginning was having it as a part-time position that had no benefits. Uh, and so obviously when somebody found a full-time job with benefits, they would prefer that. So uh, in the end, uh, for the th third year of the grant, we're, we were able to offer that. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat, um, but we'll still give folks a minute just in case they're typing. Is there anything else about the project that uh, you found particularly interesting or wanted to share? Uh, well, we eagerly look forward to doing another crowdsource transcription project. Um, it's it's a fun and interesting way to to get the transcription done. And as I mentioned in in my presentation, um, it cursive writing just just can't be read with optical character recognition. It just comes out as gibberish. So that coupled with the fact that they stopped teaching cursive writing in the um, the uh, New York City public school system. Uh, is, is certainly going to present a problem going down the line uh, in the future for researchers who want to use archival material. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm not sure if, I think they're back teaching it uh, once again in, in the New York City school systems, but I'm not sure how that uh, is in effect across the country and around the world, if there are other areas like that. But it's a very important skill to have. Yes, it is really interesting that it seems to be a bit of a dying art form. Um, we do have a couple of more questions that are coming through. Uh, so this one is, what is the name of the software that you've been using for this project? The software is called From the Page. And interestingly enough, only a few days ago, I saw the developers uh, sent out an advertisement for a webinar about new developments and introducing people. Um, I'm not sure if it was through through the auspices of New York State. I can't remember. Maybe it was with the Society of American Archivists that they had uh, um, a class online for that. But from the page is is the software, and you can find all about it uh, on their website. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and Molly asks, in what ways do you think this project helped bridge the disciplinary gaps between humanities and scientific studies? Well, um, for us here at the New York Botanical Garden, we are one of the few scientific libraries that have a humanities institute embedded in it. And so what that is, is it invites scholars from all different aspects uh, of research to come and use our collections, which are traditionally seen as being scientific because of the botanical nature of, of the collection. But uh, through the years, there's, there are many, many subfields and related fields that the collection is really a great body of knowledge that can be used for many, many humanistic uh, based research projects. And I think that this uh, connected these important letters um, some of them can be uh, very chatty. They're not necessarily botanical. Um, some of them are talking about events of the day and uh, not particularly in this uh, collection here, but is outgoing correspondence. So this was a collection of correspondence received by John Tory, but we don't have the letters that he sent out in response to them. And I have seen in other libraries can, uh, letters that he had written describing things like what it's like to ride out west on the Pony Express or the draft riots in New York City during the Civil War. Things like that can also find their ways. One of the letters I was um, transcribing uh, had, to, had to do with a fire uh, at West Point Military Academy and how the students came together to save the laboratory and the equipment and things like that and talking about the needs of, of the, the teachers there. 
Uh, and we have another question. Um, you say that you use basically volunteers for the project. How do you go about selecting those volunteers? Well, the first thing we did is we started with the volunteers that we already had. So being a cultural institution here, we have a number of volunteers at the New York Botanical Garden. There's one time as high as 700, I believe, but not nearly that high now after, after COVID. Um, there, uh, that was the first uh, outreach. The next outreach was area schools and universities. And then there was outreach using social media and um, in the end, we had the volunteer, uh, the transcription coordinator attending workshops and seminars put on by various uh, uh, groups in public history as well that he was a member of. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do that on, on site. As I said, we had tabling for special events, uh, helping to display the project. When we had open house in the library, we would always have a feature section about this and, and show some interesting letters and see if people were interested in doing something like that. Um, this is another question. Um, are you planning to make public all of the papers in the collection in an open access platform? Yes, they certainly are right now, all that have been transcribed. They're in the Biodiversity Heritage Library, which is open access, and in their mirror, the uh, Digital Public Library of America and the Internet Archive. All of those are certainly considered open access. And we will also be sharing um, links to the project website and all of that good stuff um, with the recording that you guys will all be getting. So I think it looks like that is the end of the questions that we have gotten in the chat. Uh, any final words for us, Stephen? No, thank you for having me today. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to explain our experience with this uh, project. And I hope it inspires uh, others to, to take up a crowdsource uh, project in their own library and archives. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for the presentation and thank you folks for attending. Uh, like I said, this recording as well as some additional resources will be sent out to you all, as well as any folks who registered and couldn't make it um, within the next week or so. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week um, and thank you all for coming. Bye. Thank you.